That's why I still shit. <laughs> so bad. So, so bad. <laughs> Hello everybody, Gus the Hutt here, and today we're doing something a little bit different, well, something we haven't done before, we're doing a codex review of the new Dark Angels codex. Show my boys. Now, I don't play Dark Angels myself, so I have left it to my two glamorous assistants here to uh, go through the codex with you. Ah. So, first of all, any of you that have been watching the uh, Storm of Sidrus campaign, you already know Lurch. Brother Lurch, I guess, of the Dark Angels, but I'm wearing a hat now, so it looks different. Okay. <laughs> and a new face to the channel? I'm Len, pleased to meet you. Len. <laughs> Brother Leonidas. 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 Yeah, 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 Leonidas. Let's get all Roman on this. <laughs> Greek. <laughs> Greeks, Romans, that was right? It's all Greek to me. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this first video will be going through the initial thoughts of the Codex and going through the various uh, rules changes. So uh, I'm now going to hand the floor over to you guys. Right. Well, we're going to start with the basic rules changes for the standard Dark Angel stuff, like the uh, Warlord trait. So, we've got our old codex here, which we're going to compare with the new one, I, and then we're going to go on from that. Just, just hold those up. Cool cover, less cool cover. <laughs> 9 out of 10, 7, seven out of 10. Yeah. In, in, in our opinion. Which, as is, is the internet, is ruling, it's binding, and it's legal. <laughs> yes, if you've seen another one of his things, basically what we're saying here now is true, gospel, and basically right. There right, should be, anyway. should be a disclaimer at some point. <laughs> so he's disclaimer here, everything Len says is not automatically correct. And it's probably wrong. <laughs> but anyway, so Lurch is going to be doing the new Warlord traits, and we're going to compare him with the old Warlord traits to see if there's any massive changes at all. And then we'll get onto the rules for some of the other stuff. Then we'll actually discuss the book itself. Maybe. Maybe. Because he's been he's itching to do that because he hates it. I don't hate it. It could just have been done better. Right. Anyway, ta tangent one, we're going off on by it. By an art class of ten-year-olds. So anyway, Warlord trait one. Uh, the Hunt. Now, we, we sort of said we'll do a comparison between the two sets of Warlord traits. So I said there aren't any, really any major differences. Apparently I'm quite wrong. Not quite wrong, but there is some changes. I mean, so quite bad. what does the Hunt do on the new one? Uh, you've got precision shots on your Warlord. In addition, your Warlord's cover or shooting attacks have ignores cover. Now that is a big change to the original hunt, which is in a different, instead of being number one, it's number two in the old codex. If you're a warlord or this unit slays an enemy warlord, you get an extra victory point. They've changed that massively. The main reason why is because of the new rules in the new codex basically denote that they want to be shooting more instead of trying to get into combat. And to be honest, with the way that some of the other HQ choices are set up in other codexes, this was really hard to get. And so they've actually made the hunt a lot more viable now. But with some of the changes to things like the Nephilim, it can actually make it quite easy to remove a Warlord from play. Yes, and so they've tried to balance it out by trying to make the traits... In all honesty, that trait there is a lot more fluffy than this, because, yeah, granted, some of us, you know, we're all about hunting down the Fallen and things like that, but Shh. not every single... Don't talk about them. Yeah, we're all about trying to cover up our dirty secrets under the mat, but apparently... Them. We, we, we're not always going to be fighting them, so this hunt trait was slightly bit off in my opinion, and this one just makes, makes the warlord that little bit more spicier. Only be shooting at people. Yes. Number two is courage. Courage of the first legion. Uh, your warlord and all friendly units within the dark angels faction within twelve inches of him have the fearless special rule. So that has changed from courage of the lion. Yeah. Which was warlord all friendly units within twelve inches roll an extra dice for leadership test discarding the highest. Well, fearless is just better because you just ignore you just it. don't roll the dice, so it's just a better upgrade. Yeah. So if you had leadership turn, you can still fail it. Yeah. Courage for the line, courage for the first legion. Yeah. Fluff wise, still pretty much the same. It, in all honesty, it depends if you're a bit more, you know, primarchy or a bit more chaptery. Or legion. Legiony, yeah. But I mean, on the whole, dark angels if they run away, run away about five feet and then go, hang on a minute. Yeah, and they turn around. Or just turn around anyway. and then shoot you. Uh, number three is for the lion, which is possibly why they changed that to courage the first legion. Yep. 
Uh, your Warlord and his unit have the Furious Charge. Exactly the same. No change there, and to be honest, yeah, fair enough. Pretty reasonable. Yeah, it, it depends what you take. I mean, if you're taking, to be honest, if you if you get, I mean, because what Samuel doesn't have that he has rapid maneuvers, but if you can get another Warlord in, uh, Warlord in there, well, no, you have to we pick him. Warlord, so we'll be able to do it. So no, fair enough. You can't do it with Raven. We can probably do it with Deathwing somehow, maybe. Well, Balal will be your Warlord there. Well, it doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't have you to don't be. have to pick. No, you can, yeah, we, you, you, we can you, move on to the uh, Raven Wing and why you have to pick something else because this book needs an FAQ already. We'll get <laughs> to that in a bit. In fact, before it was even published, everyone knew it was going to need an FAQ. Tricky, Go. tricky one. Though. Games Workshop proofreaders need to be shot and need to be re-employed by people who can actually read codexes. Well, they need the 10-year-old art class that designed the book and all the artwork in it to pass it over to a 10-year-old English class to then proofread it, <laughs> if that's okay. <laughs> Once again, disclaimer, all opinions on this are not necessarily taken to be as fact. <laughs> they might not be ten years old. <coughs> uh, number four is brilliant planning. Whilst your warlord is alive and on the battlefield, you can add one or subtract one to any of your reserve rolls. Choose after you roll the dice. I like this. This is a tasty one. Same one. Same thing. It's really good. If you get it on your warlord, it's awesome. The, the only thing about these is that because... I wouldn't say the Dark Angels are so special character dependent anymore, because in my opinion, in this codex, you went you went either Belial or Bust or Samuel or Bust. If you were trying to play a little bit competitively, if you were playing Fluffy, then it doesn't matter because you just pick what you want. But semi competitively, you would either pick Belial because you get what your Death Wing, or you pick Samuel and get what your Raven Wing. And so the Twall or traits, you tend to forgot about them because you got them too and you liked to lump it. Mm-hmm. Now. In all honesty, you could probably get away with a decent green wing list and roll on that. And if you get a decent one, if you get that reserve planning, I mean, you you your deep striking stuff. If you if you're going to take, yeah, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's really good. Or if you choose to hold it back, you yeah, and knock off the one. It, it's it's that's a, it's a fluffy one. I it, like the fluffy it, aspect. It, of it's that it, it's really good, and plus it does actually resemble the fact is that the dark angels know what they're doing. Yeah, which is one thing that sometimes certain codexes forget to, seem to forget is that. Well, we are from the Lion, and the Lion was one of the best strategic fighters out of the Primarchs. The, the best. Yeah, and then there's going to be codexes coming out in Heresy that say that he was the second or third best, and then we're going to get all butthurt about it. It's going to happen. No, 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 no. I just won't read those books. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll just ignore <laughs> them. If we just ignore them. Sod all... 30k. Be a silly thing. Anyway. If you'd like to put in the comments below why you think Lurch is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> The line being that he is, he's just had the interpersonal skills of toenail clippings, it's not his fault. Uh, number five is rapid manoeuvre, which I don't think oh no, it has changed. This one's pretty good. Your warlord and his unit add three inches to their maximum move distance when they move flat out, turbo boost, run, and charge. That's changed a lot, yeah, because it's like six inches to turbo so boosting. And the, the old one was warlord rolls two dice when they run using the highest or add 1d6 to their turbo boost. Yeah, that's a massive change, or three inches on a charge. Is... Yeah, that's that's bonkers. It's pretty solid. And in fact, that makes Samuel really good. Tasty, yeah. Because the unit he goes in... that's the one he gets. Yeah, them, the, yeah I mean, the unit he goes in is probably... We'll get to this Black, in a bit, Black but... Black Knights or a command squad. Yeah, basically then Black Knights are going to get in combat, not going to get shot, and are going to kill things very a lot. Very a lot. That is a technical term used by the Dark Angels exclusively. If I'm on this channel more, you will understand that I just make up English and I just turn it into my own language. So, welcome to Lenglish. It will happen. It's a GCSE course next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number six is hold at all costs. Your warlord and his unit have the feel no pain, special rule, whether within three inches of an objective marker. I believe that's pretty much... Exactly the same. Bang on. Yeah, exactly the same. So, right, yeah, to be honest... It, once again, it's a good, it's a, it's a good trait. Our warlord traits, to be honest, have gotten better. They have improved overall. I, so, I used to look at them previously and just think it doesn't really matter which one I roll because <laughs> they're none of them great. Yeah. Or as I said, you didn't roll it because you had a special character. Right, a special character. And yeah. to be honest, now it's worth. I, I think it's worth it. It's worth taking a gamble sometimes on just a chapter guy. It's better, and, and <clears throat> my forte, I prefer eighteen fifty or twenty two fifty battles. Um, I know um, Gus the Hutt prefers like smaller bat- battles, like 1,500 points. If you're going down to even 1,000 or trying 750, these traits then kick in and then do a lot they of work. Yeah. And that's what I really like about them, is that for the lower level games, they will do a lot more work. And, well, that's, that's just a boom. It's a bonus. Um, overall, I think the Warlord traits are a lot better. Yeah, so that's, it, that's, a, that's a thumbs up. It's a big improvement. 
That's far off from both of us. We're actually agreeing on something. It may be rare. We don't know yet. They're, they're good and fluffy. Take and note, people. Fluffy and useful. I mean, that's a there's a yeah, combo there. It is. Uh, as far as the rest of the actual Dark Angel exclusive rules go, they changed. All, oh, they, they all changed, and they've all gotten so much better, in my opinion. They really have. I mean, it's just... <laughs> It's just such a big boon. I mean, yes, 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 we'll go on about the fact is that we've lost the banners, and yet yeah, I'm, I'm a big, I hate it. But with the rules for formations, you can have them banners in this game. No, there's no way. Can you imagine a unit that's under the Lion's Blade with Ballistic Skill 4 when they've been overwatched firing Salvo 2 4 bolt guns? No. I, well, yes, I would. And you know what? If we had it, we'd probably be really up there with Elder. But yeah. we're not, so we ain't getting it. I'd like to charge you. Allow me to bring my dumper truck of dice. Yeah, we're, we're not allowed it because apparently Eldar allowed everything. Me being on the uh, other side of this and having the uh, opposite view, I'm very glad that they don't have that banner anymore with the rules we're, that they did game. It's like we're not allowed Stern God because it's a special issue ammunition. We'd, you, we'd have abused the hell out of the banner of devastation with that. So what have you got there? AP3, Salvo 4, bolt guns. They get hot. We're Dark Angels. We're used to that. <laughs> Swing for like fill your boots, but I, uh, I mean I'll get to I'll, I'll get to that when we get to veterans because I actually think they're re they're really good. I, I I am a big advocate for veterans because of one of my standard boring tactics, which most people do, which is you drop pod drop pod a squad of ten of them and then just friends. go to town. What, what do you feel that? Yeah, pretty much everything. Yeah, combi melts all the way. Doesn't it cost the same amount as a melt gun? Doesn't matter. Yeah, but you only have one per five. Uh, Tangent people. <laughs> Right, back in the way. Anyway, sorry, sorry about that. Anyway, right. So Death, don't, Death, don't make me get my ball whip. Again. Death, Death Wing has been... Has it been changed anything at all? Um, it, yeah, they don't have... It used to be preferred enemy... Now it's hatred. Now it's hatred. Okay. And they're fearless, which I don't think they had before. They, they, yeah, they did. Did they? Yeah, definitely had fearless. Back to the old codex. <laughs> Let's find out. I don't think they did. Do, 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 do. I think they just said, we don't like chaos very much. This is a Death Wing... When I find the rules somewhere. Is it in the references? It's Once the old again. inner circle rule. Yeah, because that's just gone. Inner circle, fearless preferred enemy. Oh, there you go. So all they've done is... Made it worse. Changed change the name and replaced it with hatred. Well, what, what does hatred do? Reroll. Reroll. It's in combat. Preferred enemy was only... Yeah, reroll was in combat and reroll ones. But you uh, reroll ones to wound as well, don't you, preferred enemy? Preferred enemy is reroll all... All rolls ones. of uh, one okay. to hit and to wound in shooting and combat. Yeah, yeah, so this one just does combat hit. Just does just does the first round of combat. Fair enough. Anyway, so it's been slightly nerfed, but in all honesty, we kind of needed it. This codex with Dark Angels, uh, Deathwing edition. This one is it's the Ravenwing edition. Is the Ravenwing edition, to be brutally honest. We'll get onto that, but that's what's happening. They've, the power level of Deathwing has gone through the floor, but the power of Ravenwing Wing. has gone up into the rafters. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. So, Deathwing, yeah, it's a slight nerf. To be honest, <clears throat> yeah, we lose preferred enemy cast space when we get hatred cast space wings. In all honesty, if you're honest, cast space wings, you're a little bit weaker. Oh well. Yeah. Just play what? Just, just five eight them. They're, they're still just fearless. Mm. Uh, Grim Resolve has <laughs> changed. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, so Grim Resolve. It was previously uh, just stubborn and. Uh, it, was, it was rubbish. Stubborn, all you to a model with Grim Resolve, you cannot choose to foul a morale check. Ah, uh, yeah, so the. Oh, they've taken that away now, haven't they? Yes, yes. so that means the, the combat tactics thing actually works. But actually, because it doesn't mention... Well, we don't get combat tactics. We don't get it anyway. Yeah. So. No, it doesn't matter. So the they can now have... choose to run away from Furioso Dreadnoughts. In we combat. can choose. Yeah, but previously... But you don't have it... combat tactics. Oh, no, you're no, not saying you can't it, kill. Yeah, if you can't, if you can't hurt it, the, uh, our weapons are useless rule. Yeah, we can bolt it. Yeah, you, yeah we can actually. Yeah. Bolt. Before, you were stuck in combat with something you couldn't hurt. Now, yeah. you're not. Stop List this one out because this one's a big difference. Well, now on Overwatch, you fire a ballistic skill two with the standard Grim Resolve, which basically everybody has. So outside of all of the formations, you've already doubled up your chances of hitting something on Overwatch. It then starts to go a bit loopy when you bring in detachments and formations, but yeah, they're making Dark Angels very difficult to charge into combat with. We, yeah. we approve. This makes my demonettes sad. <laughs> It's, it, I'll tell you what, it, that rule, if, if, if you're going to play Dark Angels and you look at that rule, you should just feel warm and fluffy inside because it just makes you go, ah. Oh. So, I, I do, I, with this and with the formations later on, I honestly don't understand how a Tyranny player or an Orc player can actually be Dark Angels. 
I honestly don't. Like looking at this codex, they they are up against it massively. All two hundred players, feel free to try and list an arm and it will take it down. But I don't think even a monster spam list from Tyranids can deal with certain setups of Dark Angels. I just don't think I can see it. Well, it, again, once the formations and detachments we've gone to, you'll start seeing that they can spit out some seriously high strength, low AP weaponry at full ballistic at skill. full ballistic skill when they're being charged. It's so it's like I don't care you're a monster, I've still got a multi melter. It's just ridiculous. And then we've got the Quite ridiculous or awesome. And then we come to the Ravenwing rule. Don't forget, <laughs> Ravenwing edition. Yes. It says uh, Codex Dark Angels. Should say Codex Ravenwing and some other stuff. Yeah. Codex Ravenwing. Black edition. Did, did Ravenwing even have a rule in the previous one? I don't think they did. No, no. Ravenwing Combat Squad. No, yeah, they didn't no, have they any did. rule at all. And now they have. Ravenwing have been given a present. A gift. A wondrous gift. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A model with this special rule can re-roll failed cover saves when it jinks. Now, also, what I will bring up here, because it's a serious bugbear with Ravenwing players, with Dark Angel players as well, but sometimes you just went Ravenwing anyway, is we got so butthurt about the White Scars getting everything cheaper. They don't get this. Now, we have got a reason to play Ravenwing again. You've got a reason to buy this codex and just go... Pfft, Screw you. We have got a better rule. And with this and with the other goodies we've got, I think now White Scar players are going to get a bit butt hurt because they don't have half the goodies we've got. And they had to paint all their bikes white. Yeah. And a four up jink with a re roll is actually statistically more likely to come off than a three up jink. Yes, because it's 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One will be above four, one will be below. <laughs> Yeah, 50% plus a 50% re-roll is not 100% Lurch. No, it is to me. <laughs> what I will say, though, is that people are going to probably flock to Ravenwing a little bit more with these rules, which does mean certain players, like Gus, <laughs> who likes to play Tau, um, are licking just their lips because they're just going cover. to ream them poor bites like it's going out of fashion. I'm going to fight Mark like at you. <laughs> but... That's the choice you make. I mean, we, we all know that 40k has turned into a bit of like rock, paper, scissors, shotgun. So, Nemo's fog. Nuke from orbit. Yeah. We're not allowed that. <laughs> That's the only way to be sure. I know, but we're still not allowed that. A chapter master in the, uh, the vanilla codex, yeah, yeah, he can blow stuff up from orbit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we don't get strike I mean, we, We've got a chunk of planet with guns and torpedo tubes all over it. Does Dan Tail Grimnar get it in their codexes? I don't know. No, but Mary's Cowboy doesn't get it. Only the chapter masters. Ah, oh, stop whinging then. Stop whining, his cow guy was a chapter Wait, master. No, no, he, Lord of War. He's, a, he's, he's still a chapter master. He's like the chief smurf. Yeah, he is Papa smurf. All the, I don't think all the special masters get it. It's the standard, it's the chapter, standard chapter master. Chapter master. Get it. Yeah. But we don't get anyone who's got it. Don't let me go on about Maris Cow guy and the difference between him and Azrael. We'll get onto that. Shh, There's yeah. only one way to find out. Fight! Yeah, Which fight. Azrael will lose. Yeah, no, we'll so <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Literally, he will take him to Pound Town. There's, there's just no... Yeah, in every wall. I mean, that's... Yeah, okay. Just use it. So here we go. So now we've got to go to the relic section uh, because there is some juicy stuff in there. They have it's cut our relic section down by... a lot of stuff that isn't... Yeah. Well, we, all of our shields and all of the fancy shield stuff they've got rid of because they couldn't keep the shield stuff and all that extra items in with the formations. Yeah. No displacer fields, no power fields. fields. No. Um, I would have liked to have kept one of them, but then I also have liked to have got the bloody Eternal Warrior shield like the Space Marines get because it's not fair. Because we're not allowed Eternal Warrior. Even if we did have the shield with Eternal Warrior, we couldn't give it to Azrael to make him lish. Oh, you mean that? Yeah, shit Azrael. Yeah. Shit, shit. Uh, He's fight. Gargamel's cat. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. So the Relics of Caliban, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, which I think is the same in the old codex. Ah, no, because you've got things like portal racks. I know that's not special. Oh, yeah, because they were rubbish. The portal rack, great bit of fluffy kit. Uh, you can torture somebody on the battlefield if your chaplain killed somebody in a fight, which is pretty unrealistic. Then you can use their teleport homers. I think the fluff I police have come and get us. Anyone. <laughs> what can you do? Has anyone ever even, even taken a portal rack? If I had five spare points to set the point of rack, I'd take a melt bomb. No. I wouldn't take it. But the fluff was right. It was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, admit, I'll just whip out my instant torture table. So let's do comparisons on, on the relics. Because they're, they're exactly the same. No, Foe Smite is better. No, they've got rid of some. So Foe Smiter is number one. That's the, that's the same name. Uh, in the old rules, it was 24 inches, 
Uh, strength 4, AP 4, Assault 3, Mastercrafted. It's now... Go ahead. Assault 4, yep. Mastercrafted. Shred. Shred, same stat, uh, 24 inches, strength 4, AP 4. It's a Storm Bowler, so for an Interrogator Chaplain in Terminator armour, it's quite a tasty little... Oh, it's really good. That's I like it. really good. And it's not that expensive. No. A Lion Draw, same gun. It, I think it's exactly the same. It is the same gun, yes. Uh, but they've put one use only on it now. Uh, it used to be one use only. Yep, but they never had it in the thing, so they've just, they've just clarified yeah. that it's one use only. But it's a Master Crafted Plasma Blast, so yep. you, know, you roll that one that gets hot. Yep. You might not die. Then we've got the Mace Redemption. They're good. Yeah, it's pretty good. They see that should be the other thing that you've got in the Interrogator Chaplain with the Foes Mire. Yep. I'm going to shoot you a lot, and then I'm going to smash you in the face with a giant So map. that is still Strength Plus 3, AP 3, Melee, Bane of the Traitor, which I'll get to in a second, Blind Concussive. So you're striking an initiative. Uh, when the Mace of Redemption is used to attack a unit with Chaos Space from his faction, it is AP2 instead of AP3. That is pretty sweet. Basically, these poor Chaos Space Marine players don't know what hits them. Yeah, they do. It's a Mace of Redemption. Yeah, um, remember that? A um, Mace of Redemption. I'm feeling sad. Don't worry about it. Your book's out soon. It's going to destroy hell. Oh, well. We'll see. We'll see yeah. how soon that is. The, the Monster, Monster Slayer of Caliban was a bloody ridiculous monstrosity of a... It was 50 points. Yeah. 50 points for a sword. It still is. Uh, I now? think it's 40 now. But a sword, that if you rolled a 1 at the start of the combat phase, it was just a power sword. Yeah. Yay. They've kind of mucked about with it a bit now. Um, if you're on a 5 or a 6, it's plus 2 strength. Enough. It's AP3 and instant death. 2 to 4, which is better, I think, than the previous roll. It's plus one strength. Same. So, two to four. Yeah. Yeah. So if you roll a one, it's literally just the power stick. Yeah. Forty points. For forty points. But to be honest, a two to six result for forty it's points. Pretty reasonable. Maybe but worth it. for one turn out of the game, it may be a power sword. Yeah. For the rest of it, it's. But better. you're not going to be in combat with it every turn. No. Um, I'd liked that. I, I would honestly have liked the AP. For, I mean, it would have been well, too good, but it would have stayed fifty AP2. points if it was AP two instant death. But if you give somebody a melee weapon yeah. to basically a, a schmo chaplain or an yeah. interrogator chaplain and he gets an AP2 sword, why can't Gargamel's cat have one? That's true. Because he can't. Because he can't. So yeah. this guy can't have one either. And then, and then we've got the Shroud of Heroes. That's pretty good. I like it. Bear of Shroud of Heroes has feel no pain special. In addition, while he's not in a unit, he has shrouded. It's not bad. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Why not? Feel no pain. Pretty good. Still, yeah. I, I what we should have had, it's Shroud of Heroes, word heroes, heroes don't survive long apparently in 40k because they don't have Eternal Warrior. Easily could have given that Eternal Warrior. Would would that be good running it on a lone psyker on a bike? Would you like, would that be good? No. What, this? Because he, he then, he's then jinking on twos. And he, yes. And if he's, if he, as long as he's not kicking out witch fires... Then he can be kicking them out without any hindrance. Yes. Yeah, but the thing is, he's kicking out mind worms. No, I think that's fine. Yeah. Chuck, checking out mind worms. Yeah, he probably is chucking out mind worms. So but... he is then missing. But if he, if he, <laughs> yeah, yeah but mind if, bullets. But he, you can use him on his own on his Todd. Yeah. And you can just give him out the finger bobs instead. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. But, but you, you could, you could now. then run him with, say, divination, and you can run him around giving whatever units you oh. like twin linked. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a number of different ways of playing around with it. If he doesn't get the Ravenwing special, well, God forbid. <laughs> and then we've got... The Eye this of the is a new Unseen. One, the Eye of the Unseen. Unseen. Um, this I one confuses me. I don't see the point. Um, basically, the Bearer of the Eye of the Unseen has Fear and Preferred Enemy Special Wall. Preferred Enemy Special Wall is really good. Fear, fear well, nah. it's pointless. It's 40 points. Preferred Enemy, basically, is what you're buying, 40 points. It's expensive. It is expensive. But if you put it on a command squad with a com company master kitted up with preferred enemy to anything you want. I suppose that's the thing that you give to them when you don't go... Because a lot of our stuff is, uh, we don't really like Chaos Space Marines, we're going to go beat them up. This thing this, basically this actually hate anybody. We actually don't like anybody. We're going to go beat them up too. Um, overall, the relics have gotten better. They've taken away all of our other sub sub. I call them, you know, the sub relics, the the shields and all that stuff. But the ones we've kept, the, I think, are all worth their points, bar the monster slayer and the shroud. Kids are expensive. I, I think mean. they're just too expensive. Well, the monster slayer is too unreliable. 
Yes. Because you know that you're going to go barreling into combat and think, yeah, all I've got to do is tear somebody a new one and you can roll that one. Yeah. That's it. That's, That's the it. relics. Okay, so we're going to end the first video there. In the next video, we're going to be coming back taking a good in-depth look of the psychic powers. So, uh, yeah, come along and join us for that second video.